say that's a sign of a good musician. You can't turn them off. <laughs> morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Luke's parking lot on this beautiful day. If you need an umbrella to stop the sun getting on you, that's fine. It's not going to rain. You won't need it for rain. You can listen in to this on your radio in your car by tuning to 90.5 on your FM band. Hmm? The washrooms are available in the church, and we ask that you please wear a mask. Our next parking lot service will be in two weeks, on August the 8th, which will be a communion service. Uh, Reverend Grace will be taking his vacation time after that, so services will still be on YouTube with the Reverend Barney Grace. You're also welcome to join St. James through the summer at 9.45 a.m. on Sundays, and they are in their building. Session members reminded we will have a meeting on Tuesday night, the 27th, at 7 o'clock here in our little meeting room. Uh, if we're going to be discussing mainly our returning to the church. Woo! Uh, <laughs> uh, we plan that officially for September 12th, the, after, the week after Labor Day. But if you were to show up here on Labor Day weekend, you may find yourself inside the church as a practice session, maybe. Mm -hmm. But officially, it'll be the 12th, and we'll be having some festivities outside here or after. If you have any thoughts or questions or ideas, please talk to your elder or call Reverend Grace about it, or call me, of course. And if you're able, could you give us a hand to put some of this stuff away again when you're done, please, as usual? It takes about three hours to set it all up and maybe 10 minutes to take it down. So thanks very much and coming out to help us. Thank you for coming. The call to worship and it's print, printed in your bulletin. Great is the Lord who is worthy of praise. No one can ever measure the greatness of our God. Let us worship God who is faithful in all things. We will sing of God's power and speak of God's loving kindness. O God, we proclaim you our ruler in all things. And we will praise your holy name forever and ever.
Music folder? Everybody has one? Wave if you don't have one. We'll bring you one. Ah, I see you down there. Uh huh. Daniel? <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Daniel. Good old preacher's kids. <laughs> <laughs> he gets voluntold a lot, so. Just the, the folders are here somewhere? for a car. Their ears. I Is find that, that a good sign. Did you ask the backyards? I know, yeah. right? You just happened to be here yesterday. <laughs> Recording? <laughs> Thanks, bud.
everyone. Let us come together in prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks on this beautiful sunshine that we know, Lord, how your presence is with us. Whether it's sunshine, whether it's rain, whether it's clouds, whether it's storms, we know that you are Lord of Lord, King of Kings, with us through all things, Lord. We gather this morning asking for our hearts to be in tune with you, to give us hearts ready for worship, to allow us, Lord, to pause and be still and know that you are God, to allow us, Lord, to know that it is right to be here to praise your name, to lift up your name, to give glory to you. That in all things that we, we don't stop to give thanks for, that our feet touch the ground this morning, that we had something to eat, that we have voices that can make sounds, that we have minds to think, that we can express, that we have friendships, that we have connections to other people. And even if all of those were taken away, Lord, we have something that withstands through it all to know you as Savior, to know you as Lord, to know that you have pulled us out from a pit, that there is nothing good within us other than to glorify your name, that you redeem us, that you wash us, that you make us a new creation. We give you thanks this morning. We ask that our, our minds, our hearts, will be ready to receive the word you prepared for us. We pray, Lord, that we will listen, that we receive your word, that through the reading of your word, through the singing of your praise, in all things it will glorify you. We pray, Lord, that we will be changed by the hearing of your word, that we will be sent out, that we be prepared and equipped, that we will continue to seek after you and your will and what you call us to do. Hear us now, O Lord, as we pray the words Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
a new one, but Bill, I don't know if you know, he's a big fan of Johnny Cash. So he was adamant we're going to do this song today. It took so. me a long time to find a profession where I can dress in black. <laughs> <laughs> Refreshments over here. Come anytime. There's some cookies and some cold water. Doesn't have to wait till the end.
My turn. Oh, sorry. I was supposed to say something first. That's what I thought. Yeah. Say all right. <laughs> you go. I changed it up, and then I forgot I changed it up. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it is written. Saint Paul wrote to us in Romans chapter eight. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. There is no guilt you carry anymore. It has all been taken care of. The Lord has saw to it that it is finished. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Sorry about that. Thank you. Now a responsive reading. All right. The responsive reading is Psalm 145, verses 10 to 21. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. So that all people may know of your mighty acts and, and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your domain ensure, endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The, the Lord, Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He, he fulfills, fulfills the, the desires, desires of those who fear him. him. He, he hears, hears their, their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My, My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Lord. Let, Let every, every creature, creature praise his holy name forever and ever. ever. Let us come together in prayer. Gracious God, as we open up your word, we ask, Lord, that 
we hear your voice. We pray your blessing upon the reading that your word does not return void, as you promised. We pray, Lord, that it will comfort us, that it will push us, that it will challenge us, and continue to assure us of the promises that you have. I humbly ask for you to speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Testament reading this morning is from 2 Kings chapter 4 verses 42 to 44. A man came from Baal Shalisha bringing the man of God 20 loaves of barley bread baked from the first ripe grain along with some heads of new grain. Give it to the people to eat, Elisha said. How can I set this before a hundred men, his servant said. But Elisha the prophet answered, Give it to the people to eat, for this is what the Lord says. They will eat and have some left over. Then he set it before them, and they ate and had some left over, according to the word of the Lord. In John chapter 6, 1 to 21, they feed the five thousands. Have I got the wrong page? No. Jesus feeds the five thousands. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, or the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up to the mountains and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Jesus asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy. He has five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, 
have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down, about 5,000 men that were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had already eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus had thus performed, they began to say, surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, drew again to a mountain by himself. But when evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, it is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. I think I'm safe here. Not getting feedback. Prepare to, uh, uh, with all the music, I prepared a shorter message. Sh shorter. <laughs> yeah. So I'll do my best. Am I still feeding back a bit? I'll back up a step. Hmm? The spots. I don't know where to stand anymore. Let's try over here. <clears throat> there was a, uh, well, there still is a popular preacher, and, and his name is Francis Chan. And uh, years, in, like, I say years and years, a decade or so ago, big church, big following. Uh, he's, he's since went a bit off the rails. He said some controversial things. But he said something once about 10 or 11 years ago, and it sounds controversial. It sounds almost blasphemous, but you have to stop and listen to the words. And he didn't say it the way you think it ought to be heard, perhaps. I, I'm going to read to you. I'm going to paraphrase roughly something that Francis Chan said, and I believe this was probably part of his sermon that he gave. And he said, I, I came to a shocking realization that if Jesus had a church in my town, in my city, mine would be bigger. I know how to cater to people's needs and their desires. And, and as I read that, that that's, not, that's not like a um, puffing himself up kind of idea. That's not like the, the Beatles saying that they're bigger than Jesus. He's saying, I may not be doing ministry the right way because I'm not attracting people the way that Jesus would attract people. And I can, I can see that. I, can, I agree with that in a lot of ways because reading what we read in John chapter 6, we observe Jesus putting on a clinic of how to attract a large crowd. It, it numbered, said 5,000 men. Now, if those men represented families, we could easily bump that number up to about 20,000, give or take. Because he was feeding them, he was teaching them, he was healing them, and the crowds closed in. And then by the end, if you were to read all of John chapter 6, you would then see another demonstration that Jesus would put on another clinic of how to disperse a crowd and how to get them all to walk away. For a quick recap of John chapter 6, it surely began as how we read. He did the same sign as the prophet Elisha. He blessed the fishes and loaves. And not only just feeding 100 people, he fed thousands of people with just uh, what would be a meal for a child. He feeds the multitudes, and then he senses that the people immediately want to make him the power in charge. They want him to be king. They want him to be general. They want him to lead the armies and free Jews from the oppression of Rome and its empire. 
So he sidesteps that. He sends the disciples away. They head across the water. Jesus walks on water. And everyone else travels by foot, uh, trying to figure out at least where's the boat going to dock. So they rush along the Galilee shore for hours and hours just to try and find him again, to ask him to, to do it again. More bread, please. And Jesus tells them that uh, he is the bread of life. He begins to tell them that it's no longer about the sign that they want to see, that in order for them to understand, they need to know that he's offering something beyond just making them feel full for a day. And he begins to preach to them again. And he says this in verse 27 in John chapter 6, Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. And immediately they want to know, okay, if, how do we get this food, this, this eternal food? It's, it's reminiscent of when he was talking to the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well about having living waters instead of just the regular well water. They're probably thinking, okay, where's this special food? How do we do it? And Jesus is going on to try and explain to them this is something spiritual. He says, this is what it requires to believe in the one God has sent. This is taking place an entire year before he would go to Jerusalem on the next Passover. Says this is close to Passover a year before the crucifixion. And he's telling people now, you will need to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Where he said in verse 51, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And just like that, the crowds were gone. He wasn't handing out bread anymore. He was offering eternal life. And that by the end of John chapter 6, Jesus is now only surrounded by the 12 disciples that he called by name. And he asks them, would you like to leave too? From 20,000 to 12. And why? Because the people were seeking their own Savior. And the Savior that they seek addresses their greatest concern. And not much has changed today. Some people are still seeking the loaves and fishes Savior. Some people are wanting to be saved right now from the current condition, right now from the tragedy, right now from the worst thing happening to them. That if that can just be fixed right now, everything, and, and then they'll just be done asking for things. This is very similar to having, say, the genie and the lamp kind of idea. And when I need something, I'll come asking, but otherwise, please just stay at arm's length. Then there's the other category where people want justice. They want things fixed now. They want, they want the world to be made right. They want the ruler to come back. They don't want to see terrible things happening anymore. The people who wanted to push him into king, because the context here, we're, we're dealing with poor people. We're dealing with the downcast and they wanted the king, they wanted the general to lead them to victory. And I don't see, I, I, that makes sense too. Both these things make sense, by the way. Right? We pray for these things. We want these things to happen. But we need to realize the order in which we seek them. Because there's door number three. And nobody went for door number three. At least that day. It was going over their heads. The door to eternal salvation. See, the people weren't ready for that one, at least not yet. The offer of eternal life. Everyone took a pass on that one. Because the savor you seek is directly related to what you need saving from. And the people were convinced they didn't need saving from death. They didn't, they didn't need saving from sin or from hell. See, they had the Levitical system that was given to them where there's going to be a day of atonement each year and they'll send the high priest to go into the Holy of Holies just once each year and he would take the sacrifice, he would take the blood and he would sprinkle it onto the mercy seat and this image that's been in my mind of each high priest that goes in there, he would be looking down and he would see the faded spots where last year's blood was and the year before that and the year before that because it would just have to keep happening because they know that this, this was the band-aid they were given this was the shadow. This is the type until they're waiting for the real sacrifice to come. So at least we can maybe put that in a type of context. Perhaps they thought, well, they're taken care of that way and they're not ready for the Messiah to come. But, but how do we dress it today? Where people aren't worried about atonement anymore. 
that, that one's fallen off the radar because now we've fallen into this loose, false gospel where people say, well, if God is good, then he's probably thinking a lot like me. He'll probably just wink at sin and he'll have a threshold much like I do. I just need people to be nice. I just don't want them to be violent. You know what heaven's for. Heaven's for people who, who don't murder, people who don't steal, you know, people, people who, who don't break commandments. But, but good luck with that one because I'm not finding that in my Bible. Where Jesus tells us that if you have hatred in your heart for someone else, that is murder. So it really comes down to this point then. If you want eternal life, there are actually two options. Now, it, it, hear me out. There's two ways. The first way is that you can be as good as Jesus. Never lie. Never cheat. Never steal. Have no hatred in your heart. Honor your father and mother. Do not lust within your heart. Do not envy. Do not boast. Do not be greedy. And make sure that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. We've all fallen short of that one. And that is the standard. But there's the second way. The second way is that you can believe that Jesus bled and died and paid for your sin. He said that is the work that's to be done, is to believe in the one whom he sent. So with these three types of saviors, you can embrace them all. But primarily, the question still remains, which savior do you seek? Amen. To God be the glory. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we come to you in prayer for all things that you call us to come for. For the challenges that we have, for things that concern us. We, we pray for the healing of bodies. We give you thanks for medical professionals, for um, clinical teams that heal, that, that provide medication, that give first aid. And, and we thank you for the mir miraculous healing in those ways, Lord. But we pray for the other unexplained healings to take form. For those dealing with all sorts of pain, for those dealing with setbacks, for those dealing with uh, um, any ailments, that your healing hands would come upon them and glory would come to you, Lord. We hold up to you those who are struggling with um, inner battles, doubt, fear, remorse, guilt, temptation, however it takes form. Anything that, that darkens our minds, that makes us feel unworthy or unable to be one of your children. That you lay claim to that and heal and allow that to pass. We pray, Lord, for the smooth running of all the things happening through our, our, our region, our province as things open up. That as the step three takes hold, we, we pray that numbers continue to improve, that, that things get better, that we open up back to the way we once knew them. That we're no longer worried about the spread of, of the pandemic. We pray, Lord, for the unrest going on through the world, the, the families being moved by forest fires throughout our country. Pray that lives are protected and... and the homes involved and, and all, the, all the things and that the, the fires are, are extinguished, Lord. We pray for the unrest throughout the world as different protests continue for, for freedoms and liberties. We pray for your spirit of freedom, for your spirit of peace to be there, Lord, to, to have justice be sought to keep those vulnerable protected. May you continue to open our eyes the way that prayer is answered around us. May we continue to abide in your will. May you use us, Lord, in ways of providing a kind word, of, of showing the way of expressing the gospel, the love of Christ to one another. May you continue to open paths before us. May we humbly follow. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
extended ending. That's classic. receive this blessing. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Oh, we have a, a
tambourine here calling someone's name. We don't know who's Got a couple of tambourines here that need people. Uh, friends on. Oh, there's another one. Oh, here comes a volunteer. It's very un-Presbyterian, but we'll let it go today. <laughs> we are making a joyful noise today. Please stand for this last song, if you're able. We all want to play it out. Let's all play together now. I saw the light. I saw the light.
sits me down and I breathe here no more. His anthem will sound on that eternal shore and join with the angels in heaven on high, singing praise.